the awful thing about walking for most people is that it's slow. But in fact, the great thing about walking for most people is that it's slow. Um, walking is the one activity, if you're able-bodied and you can walk, not everyone can, but if you're able-bodied and you can walk, walking is the one activity which is closest to an unconscious activity. In other words, it, it still requires some brain cells to walk, but not much. And so what happens is that when you walk, it becomes almost a form of meditation. Um, uh, meditation at three, you know, three miles an hour. My name is Hugh Henry. I'm uh, on the board of directors of the Saskatchewan History and Folklore Society. And we are about 14 miles north of Swift Current at the Henry Funk Farm. This is uh, the end of day one and the beginning of day two on our walk to Battleford along the historic Swift Current to Battleford Trail. And uh, we're expecting to take 18 days to get there with one day off in the middle to have a day of rest. It's about 210 miles and kilometers, I guess, 340 or 50 thereabouts. Saskatchewan History and Folklore Society has several programs that they've operated for a number of years. And one of them is called the Historic Trails and Sites Program. I'm, I'm very interested in history and local history and people's attachment to places, uh, you know, some of that through the settlement area. Uh, and also now with, we're, we're talking about reconciliation and of course I understand that uh, with my interest in archaeology and other sorts of things that there are people here, there's evidence of people here and that people have been here for many hundreds and thousands of years. And uh, walking like this, taking the time to walk one step in front of the other really gets you connected to the land and the people, like the far, you know, strangers along the way uh, and just sort of get a sense of times pass but even your personal maybe a personal challenge and a personal opportunity by slowing down your daily life to reflect on things like reconciliation or even even your homestead families like what how are they living here you know 80 90 years ago what trials did they have how did they manage living in the land with 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 friends and neighbors and so on so that whole thing it just kind of wraps up and and the nature is lovely i mean we just passed a blue blue heron just flew up in front of us this morning lots of wildlife to see and again if you don't slow down your life you miss out on a lot of that. My name is Matthew Anderson. I am a, um, I'm a professor at, in theological studies at Concordia University Montreal and I grew up in Saskatchewan but I've lived in Quebec for 30, over 30 years, 32 years. Uh, why would anybody in their right mind um, walk in Saskatchewan firstly I think just to walk in Saskatchewan is considered idiocy by a good number of people. But also then why would you walk uh, across rural Saskatchewan on, on grid roads and gravel roads and across pasture and um, skirting uh, cultivated fields? Uh, it's because what we're trying to do is uh, with Hugh Henry and uh, with a whole group of pilgrims, there are 10 of us right now walking, uh, we are uh, chasing the Battleford Trail. And, uh, and I don't know for sure, but I think it's probably, we're probably the first uh, people to walk the length of the trail in a hundred years. Um, and so by doing that, we're trying to draw attention to the trail and to its history and, uh, and also to some of the concerns that, uh, that have always accompanied the Battleford Trail. There are uh, 10 of us walking right now and everybody likely has different reasons for walking, but I have, my personal reasons are um, that I wanted, uh, um, I have an interest in uh, public trails of public interest on private land. Um, and that is a, no disrespect to private landowners whatsoever. Um, but it's, it's worth, um, especially right now, I think we need to know something about our heritage in Saskatchewan. And uh, as I said, I grew up here, even though I've lived in Quebec for many years. And, uh, and part of that heritage is the battle for trail. Uh, the trail has, uh, has, has not been entirely forgotten, but uh, it's not really uh, promoted like it could be. So one of the reasons we're walking is so that people know about the trail. Um, another reason is that uh, it's, of all of the different trails in Saskatchewan, and there are several that are of really important historical value, this trail in particular is interesting because it has something of interest to Indigenous, to Métis, and to uh, European background Canadians, Saskatchewan people. So it's a, it's a fascinating place, and nobody knows about it. So why, why is a trail like the Battleford Trail still relevant today? Well, um, do we still have Métis in Saskatchewan? Absolutely, a vibrant, a living Métis community. 
who are uh, in their turn finding their roots and recovering their their very important roots. So the Métis were were here and were kind of entrepreneurs of the early uh, settlement. And so it's important to them and it's important to us uh, in terms of living heritage. Um, do we still have um, uh, indigenous people in, in Saskatchewan? Of course we do. And indigenous people never went away. Sometimes they were pushed certain places. But uh, And what about the relations between indigenous and non-indigenous people in Saskatchewan? Could it be more current than right now? I mean, than right now, these weeks. And so uh, living heritage, yes, this trail represents um, something of ongoing importance to people from Saskatchewan, to Canada, from uh, to uh, non-Indigenous people, to Indigenous people, to Métis, to, all, to every one of us, really. Our particular group, we're primarily um, European background, Canadians, but uh, Rick Kotowicz, who's walking with us, is, uh, is Métis and has also adopted Carry the Kettle First Nation. And uh, we're going to be passing through Mosquito uh, Reserve, and uh, they will be hosting us, and also we'll be, uh, we'll be doing a sort of an afternoon of discussion together. And uh, part of the TRC's call to reconciliation was uh, a call to, uh, to get to know each other. And, uh, and frankly, it's, uh, in, in Quebec, we always use this expression, deux solitudes, or two solitudes for the English and the French. Well, that's not just true in Quebec. That's true everywhere in Canada, where you have uh, two solitudes of Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians. Uh, so, for instance, when we talk about the Battleford Trail, a lot of the history of the trail um, Métis people know very well, but non-Métis people don't know so well. Um, and uh, when you walk for hours and hours, what happens is, besides your, your feet getting sore and your, you know, your head hurting from the heat or something, but thoughts start to bubble up, and it's just natural. You don't have to look for them. Uh, you don't have to go, oh, I'm going to meditate now. They just kind of bubble up in your head. And um, the other thing that happens in a, in a long, long walk with a group of people together is that you form community. And so walking is a kind of meditative act individually for you, but it also is a way of forming community with the people with whom you walk and the hosts. I, I'm really thankful for this group, and I, I do want to say Saskatchewan History and Folklore Society. Um, two years ago in the Wood Mountain Cypress Hills Trail, I had a lot more to do with the planning and, uh, and some more to do with the funding of it. And this time around on the Battleford Trail Walk, um, really Hugh Henry has taken such a lead and he's a quiet, unassuming person uh, with a, a really sneaky sense of humor, actually. And uh, I've had the privilege of walking with him now um, in Saskatchewan and in Iceland and, uh, and elsewhere. And both he and Saskatchewan History and Folklore Society should be commended for highlighting, for bringing up, trying to bring up to public awareness this important trail and the history associated with it and the future, I hope, associated with it as well.